All right, so we are starting to work on logarithms, which were new to you last year. They are no longer new to you, so hopefully you can you know, wrap your mind around them a little bit better. I'm going to start by showing you a quick little three-minute video to kind of refresh your memory on logs and maybe explain them a little bit to you. If I can figure out how to make that happen. There we go. How does the difference between point zero 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 three nine eight and point zero 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 three nine eight cause one to have red eyes after swimming? To answer this, we first need a way of dealing with rather small numbers, or in some cases, extremely large numbers. This leads us to the concept of logarithms. Well, what are logarithms? Let's take the base number b and raise it to a power of p, like two to the third power, and have it equal a number n. We get an exponential equation, b raised to the p power equals n. In our example, that'd be 2 raised to the third power equals 8. The exponent p is said to be the logarithm of the number n. Most of the time, this will be written log base b of the number equals p the power. This is starting to sound a bit confusing with all the variables. So let's show this with an example. What is the value of log base 10 of 10,000? The same question could be asked using exponents. 10 raised to what power is 10,000? Well, 10 to the fourth is 10,000. So log base 10 to 10,000 must equal 4. This example can also be completed very simply on a scientific calculator. Log base 10 is used so frequently in the sciences that it has the honor of having its own button on most calculators. If the calculator will figure out logs for me, why study them? Just a quick reminder, the log button only computes logarithms of base 10. What if you want to go into computer science and need to understand base 2? So what is log base 2 of 64? In other words, 2 raised to what power is 64? Well, use your fingers. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. So log base 2 of 64 must equal 6. So what does this have to do with my eyes turning red in some swimming pools and not others? Well, it leads us into an interesting use of logarithms in chemistry finding the pH of water samples. pH tells us how acidic or basic a sample is and can be calculated with the formula pH equals negative log base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration, or H+. We can find the pH of water samples with hydrogen ion concentration of 0.00000000398 and 0.00000000398 quickly on a calculator. Punch negative log of each of those numbers, and you'll see the pH is R7.4 and 8.4. Since the tears in our eyes have a pH of about 7.4, the H plus concentration of 0 0.70398 will feel nice on your eyes, but the pH of 8.4 will make you feel itchy and red. It's easy to remember logarithms, log base b of some number n equals p by repeating the base raised to what power equals the number. The base raised to what power equals the number. The base raised to what power equals the number? So now we know logarithms are very powerful when dealing with extremely small or large numbers. Logarithms can even be used instead of eye drops after swimming. Okay, so that gave you a little bit of a review of logarithms and how to rewrite them as exponentials and maybe a little bit of what they mean and why we even use them for really, really big numbers and really, really big small numbers, and then they have a lot of other applications. So this, this set of notes right here is going on page 74. So everybody take a little pencil and write 74 in this blank right now. Check your neighbor. I write that in there every single time. And then I still have people going, what page does this go on? Well, first of all, it's on your calendar, and second of all, it's there, and don't ever ask me that question again. And don't ever have it blank again. I think I'm going to start giving you zeros on your ISN if you can't even fill in that number. Um, all right, so what is a logarithm? A logarithm is another way of writing exponents. So they used P and N in the little video. This means the same thing, um, even though it's not those, those numbers, or those letters, rather. This, is log, this reads log base B of A equals X. So log base B becomes the base of the exponent. So b to the, and then that becomes the exponent, x power equals a. It goes in a little circle like that every single time. 
Rewriting logs as exponents and exponents as logs should be very simple. That should definitely be something that you have down by now, even if you didn't love logs the first time around. So your common logarithm, the one that they talked about that's on most all calculators, is when you have base 10. So we don't really write the base. This is just log of x. All right, so the first few things that we do, it's going to be very basic, very simple. We're just rewriting it. So it says write each equation in exponential form. So this is a log equation. We are rewriting in exponential form. This is log base 7 of 49 equals 2. So the base is 7. The exponent is 2. And that's equal to this right here, which is 49. Okay? We're not solving anything because there's no variables. Right? You're just rewriting it. And then this becomes 2 to the fifth equals 32. Let's go ahead and do 3 through 6. Do we all agree with all that? What does the negative exponent do to a number? It makes it the reciprocal. So this 4 to the negative third power would be 1 over 4 to the third power. Then 4 to the third power is 64. Some of us forgot what that negative exponent does when we were trying to simplify our y-intercept on the test yesterday. And then the um, 1 third power, what does that mean? What's another way to write that? Other uh, cube root. Cube root. Good. So the 8 to the 1 third power equals 2 could also be the cube root of 8 equals 2, which is a true statement. Okay, so that's just rewriting them. Now we're going to rewrite the exponents, of the exponentials into log form. So here, this is going to be log. What's the base of my log going to be? 5, because that's the base of the exponential. So log base 5 of what? 25, 25 equals 2. So then this is going to be log base 8 of 1 equals 0. Okay, so go ahead and rewrite the other ones. So double check yours with mine, see if you agree with all of that. Ask me if you have any questions. And if it's all laid out there for you, writing them in either form. Notice I did not put log base 10 here because you don't write that. It's kind of like you don't write x to the first power, um, except for certain instances. All right, so then it says evaluate the following logarithm using your knowledge of exponents, not using your calculator, using your knowledge of exponents. So we need to uh, introduce an, a variable so that we have something to work with here. So we're going to say log base 6 of 36 equals x. Then we're going to rewrite that as an exponential. That'll be 6 to the x power equals 36. Then you need to rewrite this as an equation with common bases. What would our common base be? 6. So this is going to become 6 to the x power equals 36 is 6 to the what power? Second. Okay, so 6 to the x power equals 6 to the second power, which means then that x has to equal 2. Okay, so I want to see the rewrite, the rewrite with common bases, and then the answer. I am looking for all of that or you're not getting credit. If you don't believe me, think about when we graded stuff two days ago and most of you left here mad at me because you didn't follow directions and then it was my fault you got a bad grade. Um, all right, so then 14 is going to be 
Set that equal to x. So 2 to the x power equals 128. So that means I'm going to have 2 to the x power equals 2 to the what? 7th. So x equals 7. We good? It's be total review. All right, flip it over on the back. And you're going to do 15 through 18. I'll give you a second to do that. All right, so on 15, what's my common base going to be? Uh, 10, right? So 10 to the x equals 10. Now, how do I get this out of the denominator? Uh, you got it negative. negative, right? And then so, and then negative what? 2. So x equals negative 2. So can my common base on number 16 be 16? No, my common base is going to have to be 2. So this is going to have to be 2 to some power equals 2 to some power. Well, this is 2 to the first over here. This has an x on it still, but 16, how do I get 16 from 2 to, a pow two to what power? <coughs> 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, so it's 4. So that's 2 to the 4x equals 2 to the first. So that means that 4x has to equal 1. So what does x equal? One fourth. What's my common base on 17? Three. So I'm going to have three to the x equals three to the negative what? Three. So x equals negative three. What's my common base on 18 going to be? Well, I could do 2, actually, I guess. The 2 would work as well, but I can use 8. So this would be 8 to the x equals 8 to the what? 0 power. Therefore, x equals 0. Okay? So I want to see the common base form and then the answer as well. Okay? We good on that? You can handle all that? Awesome. All right, so then some of them we can't do like this. Like this works out nicely. Log base 16 of 2 equals x, and we can actually get a number out of that. But if I do, um, you know, 5 to the x power equals 34 here, I'm not going to be able to calculate something like that on my own. So we are going to have to use the change of base formula for some of them. Remember, your calculator is only going to have log base 10 and natural log on it. So some logarithms are not as easy to evaluate as the ones we just did and will require the change of base formula. So if you have log base b of a, that can change, and b is not 10, obviously, then that, we can make that log of a over the log of b. Right? And then you can use the base 10 logs. So on number 19, to change this here, this is going to be log of 34 over the log of 5. And then that is not something you're expected to just know. That's why you have the calculator, right? So go ahead and evaluate that to how many decimal places? Three. So you should get 2.191.
make sure that you actually get that. Okay. Everybody agree with me on that? Yes? All right. Work on 20 through 24. Write out the change of base and then type it in and get the decimal on every single one of these. If you get a number that is um, an obvious decimal that you know and understand, I'm, not, I'm sorry, an obvious fraction that you know and understand, then um, you need to write that as a fraction. Yeah. All right, so Isaac, can you give me what you got for 20? Uh, well, the, just the answer because I wrote the equation, but thank you. What would you get? 6.615. 6 6 Y'all agree with that? Yes? Okay, good deal. Thank you. All right, Colt, what'd you get for 21? 21, I got 0. 0.463. 0.463. Y'all agree with that? Yes. yes, he agrees with himself. That's good. Um, make sure that you are actually getting these. Don't just wait for me to write them down here. All right, Reagan, what'd you get for 22? 0. 0.387. Y'all agree with that? Yes. yes. Okay, um, Eddie, what'd you get for 23? 4.930, you'll agree with that? Yes, okay, thank you. And Naka, what'd you get for 24? Um, okay, yeah, so negative one third is what we wanna put. Okay. We're good with that? Any questions? Can handle that, make sure you're typing them in right, because I mean, I know you know what's supposed to happen, but you gotta make sure you can actually make it happen on the calculator too. Any questions? All right. So then we have the natural logarithm. So log base e of x, which we don't write like that, right? Um, instead of log base e, we use the natural log of x. It's your natural logarithm. So if I'm going to write this in exponential form, it's still the base to the answer equals the argument. That Like this is my power always. This is the base of my exponent um, or my exponential. So there's not an e there but you should know there is one. So this is just e to the fourth equals x. It's the same exact little process as you do for the other ones. So here again, my base is e to the x power equals 10. Then going the other way, writing in logarithmic form, when you see an e, you know that it's natural log. So natural log base e, then what do we take the natural log of? 50, and that would be equal to that exponent that I can't read because it's like a smudge there. What is it? X equals X. Then this is going to be the natural log of X equals 0.5. Okay. Everybody get with that? 
Now, the last two say approximate the value of each expression. Again, we could rewrite them as an exponential, but that's not going to do you any good because you're not going to be able to get a common base or anything like that. So basically, these two, we're just typing in on the calculator to make sure we can actually get the right numbers out. So take the natural log of 64 and the natural log of 1 third. Let's make sure that we can get the right answers out. So, EJ, what would you get for 29? 4.159. 4.159. You'll agree with that? Yes. And then, um, Jonah, what would you get for 30? Negative 1.099. You'll agree with that? Yes. All right. Good job. So, we're all good? Quick little simple review. All right. Now, grab your little half sheet of pink paper. This is a reference sheet. We're not actually... Um, applying most of these rules today, but I wanted to use this time to go over this reference sheet before we got farther into this. So on, um, for our common logarithm, remember base 10 logarithm, you just write it as log of x. You don't put the base there. Natural logarithm is just written as the natural log of x. Okay. So some basic properties that we need to know. Log base b of 1, and b could be any positive number, right? Um, what is log base anything of 1 going to be? Zero. zero. Because what this is, if I rewrite it, is b to the 0 power equals 1. So there you go. All right, then log base b of b, what's that going to be? 1. Because b to the first power equals b. That's what's going to happen when you rewrite it as an exponential. So your examples over here, log base 6 of 1 is what? Zero. Log base 4 of 4 is 1. Okay, those are super easy. Then we have a product property. So if you're going to take the log and you have two arguments that are being multiplied, that multiplication turns into what? Addition. Multiplication becomes addition. So log base b of m plus log base b of n. And you need to be able to use this and go in both directions. You need to be able to condense and expand your logarithms. So the first thing we're going to do is use that to condense. So I have these two logs that have the same base that are being added together, which means this just becomes log base 3 of 8 times 3x, which I can then simplify to log base 3 of 24x. And that is my answer. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Do you need print? Say that one more time. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like parentheses here? Yeah. Um, yes and no. I guess it kind of depends on it. It's probably safer to put them there so you can kind of tell what's happening with your stuff. But really, we're kind of expect that all that's happening. If, if I wanted to do the log base 3 of 24 times x, and like x actually on the outside, then I would really also want to make sure I have parentheses here. But it is probably safer to just go ahead and have them. I don't, they don't necessarily have to be there, but it's not a bad idea. Um, no, not as long as it doesn't look like x is like hanging out by itself. You know, sometimes you space things out. And that's why I say sometimes it's safer, so you know that whatever you're trying to say is actually getting across to whoever's reading the paper. All right, so then I need to expand this next one. What am I going to need to do first? Factor, because there's nothing about subtracting in here, right? Just because I'm subtracting, I don't get to change that to something. This would have to be multiplication, and it's not, so I need to factor. So this is going to become the natural log of, and then when I factor this, what do I get? x minus 2 and x plus 1. And here, I feel like there should be extra parentheses or brackets around that for that same reason. Um, that doesn't necessarily always happen. But again, if I really wanted to say just the natural log of this part times this, then I would want to make sure there's parentheses around that. So, But I'm going to take that and I'm going to expand it. That multiplication becomes addition. So this becomes the natural log of x minus 2 plus the natural log of, that does not look like a natural log natural log of x plus 1. And those parentheses, they're definitely important because if I don't do that, then it does imply that I'm just adding on the end. Okay? We good? All right. Awesome. Quotient. Well, if multiplication becomes addition, then division most likely becomes subtraction. It makes sense, right? So this would become log 
base b of m minus log base b of n. And once again, you have to be able to go you know, from subtraction to division and vice versa. So since we're condensing these and it is subtraction, then this is going to give me log of 80 divided by 16. And then what's 80 divided by 16? 5. So this is just log 5. I'm going to expand this one here. So that's division is going to become subtraction. So this is going to be log base 2 of x minus log base 2 of 5. And that is all I can do with that. Okay, we all good? So the power property, what happens to the exponents when you have them in your little argument here? They, get, they come out to the front, right? So this little n comes out to the front, and this becomes n times the log base b of m. So then the flip side of that is true as well. It's already out in front, then it becomes the exponent, depending on what you're trying to do you know, in any given situation with your logs. So this becomes the natural log of 9 to the third power. And then what's the 9 to the third power? Seven twenty nine. Okay. You also have like a calculator in front of you, right? Just saying. But good. I'm proud of y'all for not just jumping on the calculator. Seven twenty nine. And think about this too. Just a little reminder. If it's like a multiple choice thing and you have to have nine to the third power, you know nine squared is eighty one, right? And then you have to multiply that by nine. What does the last digit have to be? Nine. So at least if you know that much, sometimes you can narrow your choices down, right, without having to actually multiply it all out. Remember those little things? All right, so then now when I have this, I have this exponent. This exponent can come out front, and I can have 2x times the log base 7 of 3, and that's the best I can do there. Okay. And this is the reason why when you get common bases like 6 to the x power equals 6 to the 2 power, then you're really just taking the log of both sides and then the little exponents come out front and then you can divide and it goes away and all that kind of stuff. All right, so change of base. It was also on your notes. We're just writing all this stuff here together. So if I have log base B of A, this is going to be log of A over log of B. So there's two more to evaluate like we did on the notes. So go ahead and get those written out and evaluate them. Right, Tuan, what'd you get for this first one? 2.260. Y'all agree with that? No? Okay. So try that again. Let's see what happens here. We don't agree. It's okay. Yep, see? You can't make up numbers. It's not okay. Three point zero six one. Three point zero six one. All right. Do we agree with that one? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you, Sebastian. What did you get for the last one? Two six three. Y'all agree with that? Yes. Okay. Good deal. Now I want everybody to get their ISNs out and put them on the table right now. 